Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. From Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Ruth Hussey in Mother of the Groom on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark brings you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, we present a story called Mother of the Groom by Harriet Fitz Ryan. If you were asked to judge from its title what kind of qualities this story has, maybe you'd guess a warm heart, a lively sense of humor, and some endearing characters who might possibly be your next door neighbors. And in all this, you'd be exactly right. Mother of the Groom is as light as a cake that comes just right out of the oven, and of course, a wedding cake. We like to tell this kind of story once in a while because once in a while we also like to remind you and ourselves that even in a world beset with problems, there does remain the warmth and humor of family life. To star as our heroine, we are fortunate to have that delightful actress, Ruth Hussey. And now, here's Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you want to remember your friends, there's one way to be sure the card you send receives an extra welcome. Look for that identifying hallmark on the back when you select it. For words to express your feelings and designs to express your good taste, that hallmark on the back is your guide. Like the sterling on silver, it's a mark of distinction that all quickly recognize. And it tells your friends you cared enough to send the very best. And now Harriet Fitz Ryan's Mother of the Groom, starring Ruth Hussey. <laughs> of you always debating with the other part and saying all kinds of things that you wouldn't like anyone else to hear? If so, you'll understand our heroine tonight. She's faced with a situation that could drive any fond mother into a condition of split personality. The fact that her dear son, whom she still thinks of as a little boy, has actually got himself interested in a girl. Of course, this letter doesn't necessarily mean anything. You know perfectly well what it means, Martha Bartlett. This isn't the first time Jimmy's brought a girl home from school. Weekends, that's different. He must be pretty serious about a girl he wants to bring home for the entire spring vacation. Dear Mom, I'd like to bring Betsy Evans home with me for the spring vacation, so please will you write her a very special invitation. Oh, dear. You can put two and two together, Martha. Your daughter's your daughter for all of her life. Your son is your son till he gets him a wife. Hello, anybody home? Bud, oh, I'm so glad you're here. We just got a letter from Jimmy. Oh, how's everything with the budding lawyer? Well, I'm worried, Bud. I, I think he's planning to get married. Well, I should hope so. Is it anybody we know? Oh, how can you take it so calmly? As if I just told you I'd overdrawn my checking account or something. <laughs> Let me see the letter. Oh, but I... I've got that same sort of queasy feeling I had in the pit of my stomach when Jimmy was a little boy and, and went away to camp for the first time. Or when he was saying goodbye on his last leave just before he left for the Pacific. Well, he just says he's bringing a girl home. A very special girl, Bart. Can't you read between the lines? Betsy Evans is the girl our son is going to marry. Well, don't be so glum about it, dear. We wouldn't even have a son if I hadn't decided to marry you. You decided? Oh, that's a good one. Betsy 
Evans. Is she one of the Baltimore Evanses? Well, she lives in Baltimore, yes. Jimmy met her at college. And he's bringing her here to this house. What's wrong with this house? Well, nothing, really. But after all, I am your own sister, Martha, and if sisters can't be frank with one another... You think it's shabby. The way it is yours, Martha, not mine. But you know Evans's in Baltimore are, well, like the cabinets in Boston. They're the people. I always hoped Jimmy would pick out well, just an ordinary girl. Why, you'd be sick at heart if he didn't want the best. All I can say is if it were my son, if he were bringing Betsy Evans to my house, I'd certainly do something about those curtains in the living room. She's right. You know perfectly well she's right, Martha Bartlett. Well, I, I suppose I can have them cleaned. No, you can't. You didn't have those curtains cleaned last spring because you knew they'd fall apart. The wallpaper's faded. There's that hole in the arm of the easy chair where Bart went to sleep with a lighted cigarette. Why, well, I, I can cover that with a piece of lace and an ashtray. What about that poor old sofa and those lampshades? Well, I never did like those lampshades. Oh, I can't let a girl see the house in this condition. Not a prospective daughter-in-law. Mr. Lewandowski. Uh, Mr. Lewandowski. Call me Ike. Uh, all right, Ike. Uh, do you think you could have everything done by Saturday? Well, Mrs. Bartlett, I do my best. Oh, please, Mr. Lewandowski. Uh, Ike, it's got to be done by Saturday. You see, the reason we're making all these changes is... Well, my son's coming home from college, and he's bringing a girl that we think maybe he's going to... Well... Ain't that romantic. <laughs> I do all this painting and papering and fixing up just so boy and girl can get together, no? Well, that's one way of putting it. Uh, makes me feel just like a cupid with a hammer. <laughs> Don't you worry, Miss Bartlett. By Saturday, everything going to be hunky-dory. What in the name of heaven is going on in here? Now, Bart, you said it was all right to make a few changes. Well, I didn't expect you to tear the house apart. Well, we had to repaint the living room walls to match the new drapes, and we've always wanted a plate rail in the dinette, and you'll be awfully glad about the new bathroom. New bathroom? Well, what would Betsy Evans think of Jimmy if she came here and found out his parents had only one bathroom? Well, I guess I'm old-fashioned. And people used to get married because they were in love. Now they do it on account of their in-laws' plumbing. Oh, Bart. Dad, Mother, I want you to meet Betsy Evans. We're glad to have you with us, Betsy. I'm glad I could come. A great big welcome, my dear. Oh, thank you. A great big thank you, Mrs. Bartlett. Why, she's shy. She feels just as shy as I do. Well, but won't you come inside? You must be tired from the long drive. She doesn't look tired, though. She looks as fresh and sweet and luscious as a strawberry sundae. Oh, bless you, Jimmy. God bless you for choosing this lovely girl to be your bride. Holy mackerel, what's happened to the house? The uh, house? Uh, just the same old house, son. But... I, but... I guess it's just that you've been away so long you've forgotten what things were like here at home. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. I guess that's what it is. Oh, your living room is simply beautiful, Mrs. Park. Well, I'm glad you like it, dear. Yeah, I'll get the bags out of the car. Yeah. I'll do it, Dad. You want to refresh up, Bet? You go first. The bathroom's at the top of the stairs. Uh, Betsy can use the other bathroom. The other bathroom? Uh, did you forget, dear? We have two bathrooms. You know, somehow it slipped my mind. <laughs> this yourself? Did you really? Yep. When I was in high school. Pretty good for a kid, don't you think? Well, that's wonderful. Uh, mm -hmm. Isn't it good to have them here? <sighs> sure is. <laughs> it's like old times. Yeah. yeah. Like old times. Now, it's not like old times. 
something. Completely different, and you know it, Martha Barton. This is the last time you'll come home and belong here in this house. Any time after this, your Jimmy will be a visitor, a stranger. Oh, Jimmy. And that girl in there with the musical laugh and the bright smile and the tiny, soft waist. That girl is stealing away the most precious possession in your life. Oh, no, I, I mustn't think like that. Uh, what'd you say, Martha? Oh, oh, nothing, Bart, nothing at all. Mom? Dad? Yes, son? There's uh, something pretty important I have to talk to you about. Well, what is it, Jimmy? You've had a pretty good chance, I guess, to get to know Betsy during this week, haven't you? Oh, we certainly have. And you like her? Your father and I think she's just about the sweetest girl we've ever known. Well, that's great, because Betsy's crazy about you two. You know that, don't you? Well, we're glad to hear it. We want her to like us, too. Yeah. Well... I guess I might just as well come right out and say it. You see, Bets and I are in love, really in love, and we want to get married this summer, and... Well, that's it. Well, I, I... I think it's wonderful, dear. You do? I only hope that you and Betsy will be as happy as your mother and I have been. You don't think we ought to wait? Why? You're in love. You're old enough to know your own mind. I figured you'd think it was kind of fast. Gee, Mom, I bet you didn't have the slightest idea, did you? Yes. Oh, oh, of course not, Jimmy dear. It, it, it comes as a complete surprise. In just a moment, we will return to the second act of Mother of the Groom, starring Ruth Hussey. Isn't it nice to know something was selected especially for you? Gives you a sort of a glow that adds immeasurably to your pleasure. This is one of the pleasures the recipient of a Hallmark card feels. That's because of the care given to the wording of every Hallmark card. In fact, it seems to have been written especially for you, the person you're sending it to, and the occasion. The words so accurate to people, you and the person you're remembering. And when you select a Hallmark card, you'll find these words surrounded by beauty everywhere. In the design, in the paper, in the way the words are printed, in the feeling behind the words. That's why it's so easy to find a Hallmark card that says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. And to do it all with the good taste you demand of anything that bears your personal signature. So the next time you want to remember a special occasion or a special person, look in the Hallmark collection at fine stores across the country. You'll be sure to find one that expresses your sentiments exactly. And because of that Hallmark on the back, you can sign your name and send it with pride, knowing full well it will be received with pleasure. Because to people everywhere, that Hallmark means you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton in the second act of Mother of the Groom, starring Ruth Hussey. Few things in life are so important as choosing a wife or a husband, yet the choice is not as a rule made scientifically, or at least it shouldn't be. Anyhow, once the choice has been made, the impressive machine of matrimony gets moving. But in this machine, the mother of the groom doesn't even enjoy the status of backseat driver. You know what you are, Martha. You're a V-U-I-P. What's that? Well, in Washington, a V-I-P is a very important person. And I'm a V-U-I-P. A very unimportant person. Well, thank you very much. Me too. The bride's parents arrange the wedding and the reception, send out the invitation, pay the bills. And all you have to do is to get to the church on time. Well, I guess I can worry if I want to. How do you get on with Jimmy's future in-laws, the Evanses? We haven't met. But you have to pay them a call to church. Oh, I suppose you're right. You're always right, Alicia. But to tell her the truth, I'm scared. <laughs> Now, 
where did I put that address? If I've lost the address, I... Oh, what were you doing? Oh, so is your old man. You shouldn't have said that, Martha. That could have been Mr. Evans in that car. Well, if it was Mr. Evans, he'd better watch his manners. And you'd better watch your driving. There's the slip of paper with the address. One, two, four, Willow Tree Lane. Willow Tree Lane? Sounds pretty fancy, doesn't it, Martha? The Evanses in Baltimore are like the Cabots in Boston. They're the people. Or well, maybe these will be the poor Evanses. Black sheep cousins or something. Fat chance. Living on a street like this. But put out your arm, Martha. You don't want to drive up to the Evans' house with a smashed fender. One, two, four. There it is. Oh, that big white colonial mansion. Oh, dear. Looks like a Howard Johnson's. <laughs> now, now, for heaven's sake, don't act like the country hick that you are. Is your hat on all right? Your stocking seems as... Fr oh! Look out. Don't run over the lawn. Now, now, think before you talk, Martha. Don't say anything ridiculous. Oh, I'll die if they don't like me. I'll just die. These people are going to be your relatives, Martha. Now, you've got to make a good impression, for Jimmy's sake. Oh, my lipstick, it's crooked. No time to fix it. They're probably peeking at you right now, wondering what you're like. Well, you can't just sit here in your car in the driveway. They'll think something's wrong with you. Uh, here I go. be stiff and formal with cold eyes and long noses and they'll look at you like a bug on a microscope slide. Mother Bartlett. Betsy! You almost forgot about Betsy, didn't you? Oh, it's so good to see you. Come in. Was the traffic heavy? Oh, Mom, Dad, come and meet Jimmy's mother. Oh, how do you do, my dear? And welcome. Thank you. Well, you, you look just like Jimmy, oh, except female, of course, and a foot or so lower down. Oh, oh, you see, Arthur, she looks just like Jimmy, only little. We're so glad to know you. Hope you won't mind taking potluck with us tonight. Oh, I mustn't stay for dinner, Mr. Bartley. Oh, nonsense. Of course you'll stay. And we won't tolerate any of that Mr. and Mrs. talk. Call me Arthur. This is Sally. And I'm Martha. Please, you must call me Martha. human after all. Oh, no. Uh, now what's the matter? Polly and Blair can't come to the wedding. That's the fourth turndown we've had this week. Say, did we send an invitation to Ike Lewandowski? Ike Lewandowski? No, certainly not. Well, I know he wants to come. He figures he's responsible for the whole thing. Cupid with a hammer, you know. Well, he's a very fine carpenter, and I like him, but he doesn't seem I to me... I told him his invitation was in the mail. Really, Bart? Don't you think he'd feel out of place? Only if we make him feel out of place. Seems like everybody's turning us down. There won't be a soul on our side of the church. Not a soul, except Ike Lewandowski. <laughs> now you know what they mean, don't you, Martha Bartlett? When they say D-Day, H-R. Don't confound this dreaded dad blame monkey suit. What's the matter, Bob? Oh. oh, your tie looks fine. Oh, no, I've got to undo everything. Forgot to put the studs in the shirt. Now, don't get so upset, Bob. I'll help you get the studs in. Well, we've got over an hour before we have to leave for the church. What's Jimmy doing now? What's he thinking? Don't you wish he needed you? Don't you wish you could help him with his tie and studs and cufflinks? 
Uh, hold still, Bart. Yes. After today, there'll be another woman's hands doing these things for Jimmy, just as you're doing them for Bart. There you are. <sighs> you smell good. How do I look? Like a dream. More like a bridesmaid than the mother of the groom. Who are you, the best man? <laughs> hey, wait a second, turn around. Hey, is that stuff supposed to poke out there? Where? Hey, look in the mirror. Oh, good heavens, it's the lace on my petticoat. Oh, nobody will notice it. Even you noticed it. Well, did they make it wrong at the store? I never had a chance to try on the petticoat. Well, you can't even see it from the front. Well, what do you expect me to do? Stand with my back to the wall during the whole ceremony? Is there anything I can do? Oh, find me some scissors and, and help me get out of this. Well, now, look, Martha, I don't know how to be a lady's maid. Well, you're going to start learning yeah. right now. <laughs> There. Well, that ought to do it. Now, how much time have we got? In Fifteen minutes. Oh, dear. Well, help me get back into this dress now, Bart. Yeah, I'll do the best I can. Uh, is this the top? Oh, no, that's the bottom. No. Well, it's wrong side up. Oh, Bart, you, you've got it all tangled up. Hurry up, Bart. Got to leave for the church. I'm coming. No, you're not coming. You're going, you're going, going, gone. Watch out, Bart. You, you've got the lace caught on your cufflinks. Well, I'm sorry, Martha. I don't understand these things. I'm going to miss the wedding. That's what's going to happen to me, sure enough. You're, you're, you're going to miss your own son's wedding because you're trapped in a triple deck of pink dress. Uh, Hurry up, Martha. We'll be the last one there. Hold, hold your horses, Alicia. We've got a little engineering problem. I'm, I'm going to miss my own son's wedding. No, you're not. I, I see what's wrong now. Uh, hold your arms up here. Yeah, there, all fixed. Oh, Bart, you're wonderful. Yeah, come to think of it, I guess I am at that. Martha Bartlett. What a fool you were to worry about empty pews on the groom's side of the church. Who are all those half-familiar faces? Jimmy's college friends. His army buddies. Why, that's the camp counselor who used to be so fond of Jimmy. What's his name? Oh, and Polly and Blair. They did make it after all. And Ike Lewandowski and his entire family. Beaming as if his hammer and fixing made the whole thing possible. Well, maybe it did. Bart. Bart, I, I think I'm going to cry. You think you're going to cry. I know you're going to cry. You take my handkerchief, Martha, and do a good job of it. A daughter's a daughter for all of her life. But a son is a son till he takes him a wife. Oh, it's not true. Well, the old adage doesn't hold. Not for the lucky mother who finds herself a daughter, too. with me. It's customary and expected. I want to kiss the loveliest and most important person in the whole wedding. Who? The mother of the groom. Oh, God. and James Hilton will return in a moment. 
When you select a card to send to a friend who is having a birthday or starting a new job or getting married, have you ever thought that you are buying the one thing that is always bought for others, never for yourself? And like all gifts, it is a reflection of your taste. You want to know it's right, want the receiver to recognize its quality. That's why when selecting a greeting card, people instinctively look for Hallmark cards. They know you can always find a Hallmark card that says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. They know also that that hallmark on the back carries a meaning. It's like a stamp of approval on your own good taste, like the label of a fine store, like sterling on silver. It's a mark of distinction that all quickly recognize. For that hallmark on the back of the card you send tells the receiver that you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Well, Hussey, you certainly made our evening a pleasant one. Thank you for being with us on Hallmark Playhouse. Well, I surely enjoyed being here and playing the mother of the groom. You know, that's a role I'll probably be playing in real life someday. <laughs> well, now you really are planning ahead. Uh, let's see, your boys must be all of three and five now, aren't they? Well, they're five and seven, Jimmy. And you'd have chuckled over something Johnny, the younger, did on Valentine's night. Oh, really? What was that? Well, I walked in and I heard him singing to himself... She loves me. She loves me not. And when I asked what he was doing, he said, Oh, just checking over the girls who sent me Valentine's. <laughs> and I was better lovers than the Hallmark cards, too. They certainly were, Jimmy, and very beautiful. And now what are you having on Hallmark Playhouse next Thursday? Next Thursday, we shall tell the story about the composer of Home Sweet Home, dramatized from a book by Rupert Hughes, significantly titled Man Without a Home. And as our star, we shall have Joseph Cotton. Our Hallmark Playhouse is every Thursday. Our producer-director is Bill Gay. Our music is composed and conducted by David Rose. And our story tonight was dramatized by Lawrence and Lee. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. <laughs> Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Miss Hussey may soon be seen starring in the Republic picture Minnesota. Our story tonight, The Mother of the Groom, first appeared in the Ladies' Home Journal and is now available in book form. The role of Bart tonight was played by Frank Nelson. Barbara Eiler and Eddie Firestone were Betsy and Jimmy. Others in our cast tonight included Lorene Tuttle, Margaret Brayton, and Ted DeCorsia. Every Sunday afternoon on television, Hallmark Cards presents Sarah Churchill, who brings you the story of interesting people on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Consult your local newspaper for time and station. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at this same time, when Hallmark Playhouse returns to present Joseph Cotton in Rupert Hughes' Man Without a Home. And the week following, Anne Crone's This Pleasant Lee, starring Deborah Carr. And the week after that, Laura Hillier's Time Remembered on the Hallmark Playhouse. Stay tuned for Mr. Chameleon, which will be heard over most of these stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC, Kansas City, Missouri.